hard to see, man. You know, obviously I've I've come around. My era was the greatest things, bro. Now when I see Man United, it's like they're like any team, bro. But you know the statue of the club where where it was to where it is now. We are. I, I said it when when Sir Alex Ferguson left, and I saw um, David Moyes' first year. I said it at the time. It might be another twenty years before we win the league, bro. I get asked this question all the time. When can Man United win again? Our new manager's gonna get us to win. United ain't winning the league until Pep or Klopp go. Facts. Or Pep and Klopp go. Yeah. And then that's only if they've got the foundations in place before that. I think whoever comes in, a new manager, I know as Man United fans, we, we've always been like, we've got to win the league. We've got to win the league. Like that season, I think we need to be like realistic now. Until them, them, the big hitters leave, Klopp and Pep, yeah. I don't think no one's going to win the league. Soaking. They can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League He's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is Vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know this Massive shout out to our sponsors, Soakin. It's the second leg of the Champions League this week and boy, Steve, it is kicking off. But for the fans who use Soakin abroad, this one's for you, man. Steve, can I ask you, yeah? Uh, what is your favourite European trip when you're travelling? Not this time around. Mm -hmm. I didn't go this time around. Yeah. Spain's always been a good one. It's always good to go to Spain. Usually get the weather. And here's the thing as well. When you're going away in Europe, normally it's like March, it's April. It's usually a bit hotter than it is in England. It's usually yeah. a nice little trip. Mm -hmm. I've never went to the Del Alpe where Juventus used to play. But for me, though, that was a proper Champions League. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have gone to the Del Alpe. That's your 99, Roy Keane. And that's when you can use your soaking card, man. Like international transfers. Listen, I absolutely love it. And for you, if you're a Chelsea fan, a Man City fan heading to Madrid this week, West Ham fans going to Lyon or, or Leicester going to Eindhoven, make sure you use your soaking card. Everything's in the description. All you have to do is click, download your soaking app and you can use it. So make sure to download the soaking app, use the link in the description and open your free account today. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of Vibe with Five. You got here a sad, somber Joel Bayer, Stephen Housen, and Rio Ferdinand. But we got a special guest, the star of Ballers and Watches, our show coming out soon, Mr. Kieran Richardson. How you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. You? Well, it's been a tough weekend. I can't lie. For, for all first of, of all, first here. of all, we know Kieran, he played with me at Man United. Mm, mm. Seen him grow up through the years from about 11 years old. Yeah. Who do you support, Kieran? Arsenal. <laughs> I needed some backup this week. You know what I mean? It's been a bit difficult. Yeah, it's been. Wrong week. What is it United yeah, Academy players supporting Arsenal? Because Ravel Morrison does as well. Does he? Yeah. It's a London oh, thing. I don't, know, a, I don't know. I'm a London boy. That's Rio, I know you're an Arsenal fan. Deep Where's, down, what man. part of London is Ravel Morrison from? Moston. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Look, man, we've had shocking, shocking results. Um, Who, Arsenal? No, both. Well, Come oh, on, don't you asking, man, you, bro. <laughs> I'm asking. You ain't, got, you ain't got the legs to be oh, doing all that today. You, know? you need to chill out. You know, shout out to Gordon. Uh, man United losing 1 0 to Everton. Man, shocking. You still going on about that? That was Saturday. Oh, come on. Today's Monday. Shocking result. Everyone's messaging me. Oh, Bible 5. What you guys have to say about it? <laughs> Rio, I'll let you kick on with the review. What, what was your thoughts leaving that game, man? Because you ain't been talking to us in the group chat. Yeah, there's nothing to say, man. I'm just flat. I'll be honest. The performances are flat. I'm flat. I'm kind of, it's like you're done with it a little bit. I know you're laughing. It's mad. I had even Jolie and Les got laughing at me the other day on the TV. Like, it's just, it's, it's getting really, really, really low. But, yeah, there's, when you're a football fan, which we all are around this table and everyone else at home, it's like, you need, the, the team you support, you want them to excite you, get you off your chair, show some fight. Um... Just not getting that, man. Show some character and personality, like what you stand for. Show me what you stand for. Like, I just, just, I'm not getting that. Mm. Not feeding that. And going to places like Goodison used to like, them games, they, de they demand character and personality. Them stadiums like that old school throwback stadiums where if they get up a goal or if their, their performance is really getting their fans off their seats, it's an intense place, man. Okay, you know what it's like. Goodison's a horrible place to go. What is it like? If I'm honest with you, that's probably the worst place for me, <laughs> for me, 
Anfield and Goodison are the worst places to go as a player. <clears throat> horrible, horrible fans, man. They're in your face, shouting at you, screaming at you. Tight pitch. It's right there, taking a throw in, the guys effing and blinding. You know, it's good for them, that club. It's amazing for them, but it's really hard to go. And it's mad to have Man United just, I don't know, man. Do the stuns made of water, not so. I don't know, but what, what, what the point I'm making on Kieran is saying is like to go there, you've got to be able to deal with that. Yeah. Forget football at mm. the beginning. You've got to be able to deal with the environment. And I said before the game, we'll see today the, the characters, the personality, if this team's got it. Joe, you know I heard you say that on Saturday and I instantly disagreed. They've lost six of the last seven. They've just been smacked up by Burnley. Burnley scored three there. Yeah, Don't tell mm. me Goodison's a hard place to go to. Maybe in previous years, yeah. this season... If we'd have beat them, they're staring at relegation. No longer is it no, a no, tough no, place. No, sometimes no, that's the dangerous no, no, no. You, Okay, you flip it the other way. So your team going to try and win the league, mm -hmm. yeah? You don't want to play Everton who are in a relegation battle. You don't want to play Burnley who are in a relegation battle because them teams are fighting for something. And if they get one sniff of positivity in that stadium, the place lights up. It's a hard place you to go. Look I mean, that's all about emotions. Look at yeah, that's not a myth, yeah. that's a fact. you got to look at it from their perspective. They know United ain't playing well. Lampard's well, talk is look at how bad they're playing. Have this, not... They've just had Sean yeah, Dyche mock them off but saying that. You they don't, don't score a goal. This is the game, lads. This is the game. No, no, no. I get, I get it. it. But when, before the game starts, I get it. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, they're that place in the league. They've got no form. They've the last game they've know. got beat here and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is like, if you give them an inch, they'll take a yard and so on. It's, and it, and it becomes. Every minute goes by where a tackle goes in, a challenge goes in, their crowd are getting up, they're off their Like Kieran says, they're, they're there like this. Mm. It gets so like intense, you feel, whoa. And it takes a certain type of player, character, to be able to deal with that and then deal with the, the physicality and the, the, the way that the team's playing. It's hard, man. I know, I know Everton are struggling at the moment, but when they lost to Burnley last week and I saw on the calendar they had Man United the following week, I said to myself, they're, the probably, they're probably gonna win. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I, just the way it is right now, I said that. They, you know what? They, they're going to turn Man United over. Did you, You're right on character because we don't have any. Did you... Um, obviously, I know you... It's, I don't even know exactly what I'm asking here, but did you have any conversation of sorts with Frank Lampard beforehand or is it one of those ones there where... No, I did actually. I, I spoke to him on text. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I spoke to him this morning actually on, on, on a call, but he's... It's hard, man. Yeah. But, like I think he said... It's like this Man United isn't the Man United that he was playing against. So you approach the game very differently. Mm. And I think that we've seen many times in recent months that Man United, they have spells in games every now and again. They, they, they'll play well and you think, oh, this is, this is Man United. This looks good. But then very quickly, minutes later, they, they undo all that good work with a, a crazy individual error or the team just fall back and it becomes an, a negative situation. So... I think what, what when you're an op opposing manager to Man United now, you think, you know what, we're going to get chances. Mm -hmm. It's about can we be clinical and can we stop their forward scoring goals? Yeah, but it's been like that for the last eight years, bro. Mm. Let's, be, let's be real. Yeah, yeah. I've got my, I've... my opinion. It's been like that for ages. Yeah. Mm. Not just this season. It's been going back years. Is it tough to watch? Definitely. Someone who plays. Definitely. Football. Horrible to watch. Mm -hmm. To see how far the club's come down. What are, what are your personal feelings on United? Because I feel like Rio became a real United fan yeah. playing there. I am um, a United. I am a United <clears throat> fan. Even obviously I support Arsenal, but obviously, from me, I, I was at Man United from 15 years old to 23. Yeah. It's eight years, so it's kind of my club as well. Did you do that with every club you play for? Um, not every club. No, it's different. Only Man United and Sunderland. The rest, no. Oh, you don't support Fulham? Oh, no. <laughs> No, I don't even look at it for them. Yeah. I don't. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, All yeah. of Aston Villa, I don't support them. Mm. But I support, obviously, United. United gave me my chance as a kid. Yeah. So I, they're, they're always, they're always going to be special to me. And obviously, I had my best time at Sunderland. But when I see the club Man United now, it's like, hard to, hard to see, man. You know, obviously, I've, I've come around. My era was the greatest teams, bro. Mm. I had Scholes and all these guys in my changing room. Now, when I see Man United, it's like, they're like any team, bro. Do, do, you, do you think, do you look at that team and think, I could have moonwalked my way into that team. I, I, I don't think about that, but you're right. It's, it's different. It's different. It's hard to say that, but it's just hard to see, bro. You know, the stature of the club, where, where it was to where it is now. We are, I, I said it when, when Sir Alex Ferguson left and I saw uh, David Moyes' first year. I thought, you know what? They might, I said it at the time. It might be another 20 years before they win the league, bro. 20? Yeah, we I, I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it then to my friends. You know what? It might be another 20 years, bro. 
And obviously, he's gone 10 years now, no league. You know what the, the mad thing is? I get asked this question all the time. When can Man United win again? Are oh, a new manager going to get us to win? Oh. Firstly, United ain't winning the league until Pep or Klopp go. Facts. Or yeah. Pep and Klopp go. Yeah. And then that's only if they've got the foundations in place before that. Yeah. So yeah. we're still uh, if we, the, the foundation is only in place now. This so is what I'm saying. I think I think whoever comes in, the new manager. I know as Man United fans, we, we've always been like, we've got to win the league. We've got to win the league. Like mm. that season, I think we need to be like realistic now and think like, not like Arsenal are. We're like, we've got our young players. We're thinking long term. We're, we're miles off up. it. We're 30 years off it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't bring you in for that. I didn't bring you in. I didn't bring you in. Two years chill, chill, off 20. Chill, chill, chill. Oh, it's true. Who right. wins the league next? <laughs> Dude, all right. I, I've asked it, you. I've asked yeah. you. Boy. Oh, you know no, what? Oh, shit. No, 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 Who wins the league first? No, 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 Arsenal, no, no, Man United. Nah, that's it's an a episode, hard one. That's you know? an episode within itself. You know, we've, got, we've, got, we've got like the foundations where we're like, we we've got young we players. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Man United even I'm got that. Pair Deadwood as well, though. Yeah, I, I yeah, guess so. Are you? I've got a list I'm, of your I'm, Deadwood. Hold on. I stopped. You got us. I'm saying. I'm talking about Arsenal right now. Yeah, that's not. Oh, you as well. But you do. But you do. Yeah, we do. We're just. We're. 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 You know. My. Both. We're both miles of. And as you said. Until them, them, the big hitters leave, Klopp and Pep, yeah. I don't think no one's going to win the league. I, you know, um, Chelsea manager Tuchel was, I thought, you know what, he came in, he's doing well. Mm. I thought, you know what, he might give it a go with them guys. Obviously, they've fallen off now. Mm. But I can't see anyone getting close to them. We saw the game on Saturday. Levels. The football was just levels. crazy. Bad. Like, bad. Levels. Bad. We were talking bad. Even, the, even their first oh. game they played was at mad levels. I thought they're yeah. not going to do it. They did it again. Yeah. You know what the mad thing is? That game, when I sat down and watched it, and my two boys, my two boys didn't move off the sofa. Yeah. So you get yeah. games when you're sitting there and watching, mm. and one of them might just slope off, and the other one will go, yeah, I'm just going to go, and then they don't come back. <laughs> this game, <laughs> yeah. sat there the mm. whole time, you're thinking, right, this is this is a different level of yeah. calibre of football. Of course it is. It's so far off us. I, I, on what Kieran was just saying, I said over the weekend, Man United need to appoint the right guy, mm. support him, allow him to make some significant changes to the squad. We're still playing with Fergie's players, by the way. Mm. Like it's Phil Jones. And De Gea. De Gea. Like, we're still playing with Fergie's Cristiano. players. This this is a, a squad got. assembled Ning by goes. half a dozen blokes. This is what we're playing with at the moment. It's in no one's image. City are in Pep's image. Liverpool are in Klopp's yeah. image. We're in half a dozen fellas' images. Yes. So true. United have got to work hard to be, people are gonna laugh at this, right? And anyone who played for the club and won stuff like you two did are gonna think this is bad, but we need to fight to be the fourth best team in this country. We are not the fourth best team in this country. We've got to get above you lot, we've got to get above Spurs. We have got a fight yeah, to be the fourth. West Ham. Once, yeah, and West Ham this season. We once we get to fourth, we might be able to pick Chelsea off. Yeah, but, but you, say that. you say that. Yeah, last year we were second. No, we came second in the league. We weren't the second best team in the country. So, but I'm saying we, we came second, yeah. And I was thinking, like probably most Man United fans, we are going to challenge that. And yeah. we've had a good transfer window. We've got Ronaldo. We've got Ronaldo. Ronaldo. We got Ronaldo. You told me they were going to challenge as well. That was the main argument. We go find it. Year. You go and find it. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> I, will. I, will. <laughs> I told you we were. I said we might have All improved right. and go backwards. I said I think we're going to yeah, come I think third. You did. I think you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Mm. All right. I've got a question for you, actually. Um, what were your thoughts about. Did you see Vidic's comments? Yeah. Um, just to align it, what he told the Athletic. Every player has a problem with format sometime in his career. I, I did, and it's clear that Maguire is not at his best this season. I think you can do a few things, and one of them is not to play every match as you try to find form again and get confidence. A coach could play him in easier games. Not that there are any many in the Premier League and, uh, and take him out for the harder matches. The player needs to feel powerful and strong on the pitch again. Not as it is now, where he feels that it is not, it is not happening with him. A little bit was a little bit more was said, but you get the gist. I think he bottled it, to be honest, Vidic. I think he could have gone in way harder than that. Mm. And I why, fundamentally why, why why does he need to? Oh, you can take him out for the big games. Say drop him, he's he's counting against us at the moment. He's appealing for throwings for us. Uh, sorry, for handballs against us. Like, talk to me about being a Manchester United captain. This is a Manchester United captain. This is a Manchester United captain. Harry Maguire is not a Manchester United captain. And I completely disagree that it's form. It isn't form. What well, you saying? saying it's quality. You're saying it's quality. Ability. Yeah, he's not got the ability. No, I don't. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I think, I think. For, 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 you have to look at it. Look, in an England shirt, he's been nothing but phenomenal. Yeah. All right, cool story. International football's dead. No, no. But, <laughs> but, but he's, been, he's been unreal. You can't say he's a dead player. He's been unbelievable for England. And then there'll be kids now that will be going, I'll never forget. I was oh, thinking that, Harry, that Harry Maguire, Andorra, yeah, songs, cool. etc. No, but, no but what I'm saying, yeah, is, is for England, he's been great. But it, 
they play a particular way of football that probably yeah, suits yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. At Man United, well, that's not form; it's ability. So, at, no, but just every player needs. You can say that about Gerard Piquet. Piquet was at Man United. You could you could argue that he might not have had the career that he's had. He wouldn't have. No. Uh, uh, at Barcelona, that he's, he would have had at Man United because of the way he plays. But so the twelve month following style, it's like fights, right, isn't it? Yeah. Like boxing mm. styles make fights. It's the same as as, as football. Well, the, well, the, the, what we're the, saying style. right now is obvious that the style. All right, then yeah. If you working. call it style, call it ability. Wait, 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 what are you saying? Are you saying Premier League style don't suit Harry Maguire? No, I'm saying Man United maybe. The way that Man United football and the way that they're trying to play is hasn't suited him, but also form and confidence. His confidence mm. has, has taken floor. a big knock. Yeah, of course. So, Com- confidence is the biggest and thing. I don't care who you are. Mm. You could be Messi, Ronaldo, Zidane, Mbappe, all these players, yeah? If their confidence is low, they are not the same we've player. Messi, besides the last yeah. two games in the French League, we've seen Messi. Another point, De Gea, after the, uh, the match, he said, it's a disgrace from us. We should be winning this game. Uh, he told the BBC, we don't score, but we don't create proper chances to score. We're not good enough, this is for sure. It will be difficult to be in the top four. They played Wednesday and they were tired, but they had more desire than us. That is not acceptable. What were your thoughts on that? You didn't need the, anything beyond the first sentence that this is a disgrace. We should be winning it. But you know what? It's not it, wrong. In terms of chances and that, mm-hmm. I watched the game. They, they don't look like creating chances. You'd watch the game. They don't look like they're, they're getting anywhere near creating any good chances let alone uh, a chance as well. And and the problem is as well, they put the ball in the box. It's Ronaldo's on his own half the time mm-hmm. by himself for a centre-back. It's Contrast like that thinking, to yesterday's games. Oh, Just how many players was in the box. the box? Trent's on the byline. Mm. He's on the byline Mad more than he's on his own byline. Yeah, that, that, that's coaching, bro. That's, that's you know, your manager telling you what to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it, can, it must be horrible being a main United player right now. You know, yeah. there's so much pressure. This club's mm. a massive club. You know, we're talking about them now. There's so much pressure on these guys. And as you said, for me, football's up here. Ninety percent of it's in your head. Confidence. Do you think you two had less pressure? It's no, different pressure. It's different. No, same pressure, but just different. Yeah, we were pressured to win. Yes. Every there's no you, this talk about oh, let's qualify for Champions League that oh, was yeah. an absolute failure what? in our time. But it's just just, mm, just a generational yeah. thing. It's yeah. just as long as you came third. I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe let, with Moyes. What was Moyes? Oh uh, yeah, that was no. a bad one. But what yeah. I mean, yeah, is, 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 is like when you when we were there, there was no talk. Is is like how many mm. trophies going to win this year? Yeah, it was yeah. never. Or, ne- there was or, never a doubt. Yeah, or minimum you finish with a trophy. Yeah. Whatever it is, you finish it's with true. a trophy minimum, and then you you go to win the league. I yeah. But it's different. So the pressure here. But I feel for these guys because I feel for them. this pressure, like Kieran said, it's a madness, and we're lucky that we were in a generation that didn't have this type of pressure. Mm. But we did have pressure, but very yeah. different. I remember when we had winning pressure. Was that, it? It's hard for them. I, I just feel for them because where the clubs at right now, mm. you, we, they're not really expected to win. We, do you expect Man United to win the league? I don't. But Wait, when I was saying, we expected to win. There was a different tone. There was a different I, tone I, I at the start of the season. Challenge. I did after the back of the season before. I did. I expect them I to remember challenge. there was a lot of different energy. That's Second. all I'm saying. Different. I thought we would be better than Chelsea. Yeah. Um, last point. I thought Chelsea third. was winning. Last point, I'm asking you because me and you have had loads of discussions on WhatsApp this week. Yeah, I ain't took part in that. Yeah, yeah, he ain't, talk, <laughs> he ain't talking. He, he went missing. <laughs> MIA. Um, Ragnick, he said he don't think that he doesn't think that the manager talk is the reason for it. He said we're Man United. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's not an excuse. One thing I can say about Ralph, right? Like I said from the beginning, I thought he was more of a like sports scientist lecturer. I've said it from day one. But he hasn't hidden when it comes to press conference I interviews. love that one. I'm not sure yeah. what he's doing behind the scenes. I'm not really sure of him as a coach. Hey, what do I know? But in terms of approaching the situations, he's been honest, man. I like his honesty. And I think his honesty might be something that we see three, four years down the line. If he's going point and going, don't know what he does, get rid of him. He's great, promote him. Whatever it is, and I'm not just talking about players because people just think it's all about players. I don't think United have got the foundations to be successful. No. I think you need so much more. I mean, the fact that we didn't, I mean, we talked about this, I don't know if we talked about it on air or off air, but Bill Bezik, the sports scientist, a uh, sports psychologist that you guys had. Mm. Well, when he left, they only just appointed one a couple of months ago. It was 20 years ago when Bill Bezik joined. Mm. Like, this is a club that's trying to be at the cutting edge of everything. United used to be known when Carrington was built, it was cutting edge now it's a laughing stock we have just absolutely stagnated on every single front you know the women are playing out of porter cabins it's embarrassing mm. this club needs a cultural reset from top to bottom the ed woodward era will go down as a tragedy at manchester united for me richard arnold so far 
it's a blank slate. I got nothing good or bad to say about him. It's just eyes open and let's see what he does. He seems like he's doing the right things. He's questioning the right people. I think he had a big hand in appointing Ragnik. I don't know if you know any different on that. Mm -hmm. Or if he just signed it off, I don't know. Um, if he's allowing football people to make football decisions at the football club, he'll already be better than Woodward, no matter what happens. The Woodward era is going to be tainted by Instagram buys, commercial over football. And if United want to get back to what we do, we have to be about the football. And I think someone like Ralph Rannick, I mean, we don't know what his consultancy role is, if anything. Someone talks about six days a month or something like that. That's the weirdest job I've ever heard of. But if he can be a consultant or even just be someone that bounces ideas off Richard Arnold, almost as a neutral, he's got no dog in this fight. He, all he needs to do is go, this is how you get better. And if he does that and Richard Arnold listens to him, puts the right people in place, gives what very much looks like Ten Hag is going to be the new manager, gives Ten Hag the support he needs, brings in the people he does. And more importantly... Jesse Lingard was told he could go at Christmas. Ralph said he could go. The player wanted to go, and the board stopped it. Why? I think there were the details of that is a bit complicated, but I think that like maybe when he said he wanted to go, other deals were already done. Maybe that's the only thing conclusion that I can draw from it. That like because I thought I thought that Jesse was one of the first who was going to be able to go. Yeah. But when he actually maybe decided he wanted to go, this is me just just looking at it and thinking that like. Once he said, yeah, I want to go, the Mason Greenwood situation happened. Martial's already been gone to, to Sevilla. And all of a sudden, you can't let Jesse go. But how many times has he played since? No, I know. But I'm just saying, from a squad perspective, you're looking at it from, as a manager, as a club, you're saying, I'm not letting him go because I've got two players who mm. can't play for me already and I can't replace them. So mm. I need him to stay. I can't have another one going. I'm down to three strikers. That's it. So it's, it's, it's mad. But like, I just feel that when you look at it, Man United... You can talk about training grounds and all that stuff, yeah? It's all great to talk about that. But please, you've got to get the football stuff right. Mm. You've got to get the culture at the football club right. You've got to get the players that you recruit right. And if you look at the players that have been coming to this football club for the last eight to 10 years, if you were going to do a list of them all on that paper and go, how many of these players have come to this football club and actually grown in value or got better? One. Who? Bruno. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, that's, I would 100% agree with that. I don't know any others that have come and actually you go, oh, he, he's actually miles better. We'll get more money for him now. Mm. There's none. And that goes that's down to bad, coaching, right? that goes down that's to recruitment. Bad. And so those areas need to be improved drastically for us to be able to improve. Because you could go in and buy three or four players this, this window. But if we're going to continue on the same vein as what was before, those players you bring in are going to be declining rather than getting better and improve your team. You know, when so you put it that way, when you put it that way, that is bad, man. Um, Can we move on? Before we, before we move on, I just want to say a massive shout out as well to, you know, Everton. You know, what I mean, they did what they had to do. But I wanted to give a massive shout out to Bed Godfrey. Uh, he made more clearances against Man United 13 than any other player on the pitch. And it's the most by any Everton player in a single Premier League game this season. Good for him. Bad for United. Yeah. And yeah, they listen, that, that, when you're that part of the... Uh, the league, you have to defend well. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, Everton did. They did, they did. He's had a poor season, hasn't he, Ben? Mm. I think that's a form thing, not an ability thing with Ben. I think, I think he, he probably back. had COVID and then he got a hammy, hammy injury. So he hasn't got started. That's been his issue. But you get judged when you're in that team. It's mm. not about, oh, I was injured. You get judged straight away. He had a good game on Saturday. Uh, moving on to the game that had quality beyond belief, man. Man City. Not Arsenal, then. Bro, you just leave it, bro. You're not in that position to be to be talking like that. <laughs> Man City versus Liverpool. Oh my gosh, two all. What an absolute banger! Like we were in the group chat saying, this is unbelievable. I can't remember the last time that I've seen a game with such high quality. And Rio, you are right. Until those two managers leave, yeah, everyone's chasing the pack. Incredible. Your thoughts on the game? They just played a game at a different level to everybody at the moment. The bravery in which they play with the ball. Um, the intensity, the way that they defend without the ball. You've got the humility of these players to be able to say, it doesn't matter how good we are with the ball, that, that we work as hard, if not harder, when we ain't got it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying to the kids who, I'm, who are watching the game. Where I'm thinking, forget when they're on the ball right, right now. Please just watch how hard these guys press each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. KDB just bursting out from midfield to go and close down someone on the ball. And you're thinking, well, a lot of players don't see this side of the game. 
you got to appreciate that it's like the hard work and the energy and the desire that goes into that that allows them to then be able to play and look good is, is phenomenal. Like Phil Foden didn't have a, a top, top, top game yesterday, but without the ball yesterday, getting in the right positions, Bernardo Silva, the same, getting in unreal positions. Bernardo Silva was a right winger, left winger. Oh, no. And then all of a sudden now he's playing in that in midfield. Centre mid, like dropping hold, down, Holding it. almost and dropping in, getting the ball after making tackles, interceptions. But Kevin De Bruyne, yeah. seriously. It, it, he's just level. He's, he's an android. He's, he's, he's the best. He's the best. I think he's best in the league. He's the best player in the be, league. Must be. I said in the group. It's you said him or Salah, but you're obviously different positions. Different Who? positions. Him, him or Salah, the yeah, best player in the league. Talking. It's come down to preference what you prefer. But for me, yeah. Kevin's the best to watch. Your favorite player, basically, yeah. for sure. Man, it, it was amazing. And if you look at their their points as well, obviously seventy four points for City, uh, seventy three points for Liverpool. I mean, even players that you you haven't spoken about. Did you see Thiago's pass when oh, he played oh, it? For the goal, for the goal, oh, yeah. Mad, gosh. mad. But there were so many moments in the game, like, you look at it and you go, like, wow, how, how has that happened? Like, and you, do you know what the maddest thing is to me? That this is how, the, how high the level was. Mm -hmm. You know, when you watch a lot of games, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, how many times you sit there and go, go play it, play it, play it. Yeah. And they don't play they it. Don't or, play. make that run. Oh my God, you got, you got to run now. They don't run. They Every single time you were saying that, you was cut short because they mm -hmm. made the run mm -hmm. or they made the right pass. Mm -hmm. Only and one person who I'd say who flopped on that. Jack Grealish. No, um, J Jesus. A few oh, times, yeah, yeah, cut it. Times. Yeah, 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 he had, yeah, yeah. He had a few times he could have put Kevin in, yeah. but it's Kevin in the end or someone. And yeah. also, and oh. also, and also, um, obviously Raheem Raheem chance at the beginning. I think that's the difference with me. I love Raheem to bits, and I was having this argument yesterday with my friends. Do I put him in the world class category or just underneath? Shh, shut, shut up, up no, no, right no, no, now. No, I cannot no, accept this no, talk. Of course you can't. But if you go, go, no, do you know, do you no. know what it is? Do you know I don't want to hear it. No, no, no. But let me, let me just, let me just lay it out. And you guys, well, let me know what in the comments. But he's right. No way, man. What are you chatting about? The first, it was the first, three, first few minutes of the game. He's got the chance to put Man City ahead. Yeah. Right. He's had a good game overall. But I thought to myself, hang on a minute. If that's a Haaland or an Mbappe, that's or, a good, or, or a good striker. Shut Shut up. Up. Well, no, not, I'm not dissing him like that. I'm not dissing him. Or a Harry Kane, you know he's a goal. Yeah. But with him, sometimes I go, ooh, are we just off that mark just a little bit? I was actually surprised that he scored when it was offside for a second there. Yeah. I thought, you know what, he might miss this. He's got that was too a great much finish. Time. That was a great finish. That was a very good yeah, But he's not an out and out striker though. When was the last time yeah, you've seen him score a goal he shouldn't have scored? He's, he's going to put himself in those positions. Mm -hmm. And when he does, what are you thinking? You know, or you in those key games. <laughs> <laughs> what are you googling? What are you googling? Looking at your stats. No, no. You, you can look at stats, but I'm I'm not lying. From 2017. No, no, 18, we know he's great. 18, 17, 20, 10, and then this season he's only got four goals. I get it, but my he's man scored man. goals. No, Hold don't. on, okay, okay. If for England in the in the Euros, he was the best. International football's dead real. Who was you looking at to get England out of the mire when he they were the struggling? Bagsman. It weren't Kane. He was the bagsman. Thank you. But what so he's I'm not world class. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. That no, doesn't make saying. you world class, bro. Come on, man. Come on, you you know can't, I mean? I can't accept no, it. No, because there's the level. You got world class. Are you saying he's not world class? The consistency with which this guy's played at for the last five years. You can't question him. If he's world class, yeah. What then? He's not elite. But if but. But if City's on real striker, you'll go, oh class. my God. Hold on, City, just under City, the world City class. have been the most dominant team in England for the last five, six, seven, eight years, right? Despite yeah. Raheem Sterling. Domestically, yeah. Winning everything. Winning the league four times or whatever it is. He has been integral in every who season. Is, who is world class in that Man City team, please? Everyone. I just want... Everyone. Yeah, who is world class? Kevin. Kevin De Bruyne. Who else? Cancelo. Cancelo, I'll say. Sure. Edison. Mm. Diaz. Mate, the whole bloody team. No, Rodri. Rodri, yeah. Bernardo Silva. See, it depends what you class as. Yeah, what, what are you saying? For me, saying. what I'm saying is, I reckon Raheem Sterling is a bad boy player. Love him to bits. But I think he falls short of the world-class status category. He does. You can't, Sorry. You can't talk to him just on stats alone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. so, so, I mean, he does a lot more than your goals, though. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, much but, more. But, 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 I'm sorry, but I'm... That's how I see it when it comes to him. Because and it's those clinical games. Yeah. When you look at world class. Why does he play as well? Tell me tell me one other reason you think he plays in the city team. His movement's top. Yeah. I'll give you that. His yeah, movement is very good. Is there anyone that stretches team? Stretches team. Him. Brilliant, yeah. Who stretches the team as well? No, 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 that's no, no, world, no, 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 no one. That's the world class it's part of his game. World class attributes. Yeah. yeah. But, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean your whole game you're, you're, is you're talking about his finishing. That's you can what, say his finishing ain't world class, yeah. Yeah, but right, it still well, gets you 15, 20 goals a season. What do you want? It doesn't mean I'm wrong. Well, last year he didn't get 15, 20 goals a season, did he? 
Have he got you, 10 goals uh, last season. Cool. And this season? Did they win the league last right, season? Cool. So maybe he's Did they win the league last season? Just because you won the league. Bro, did you, they win the league you last played season? with players that won the league. Didn't mean that they could Wait, wait, did he win the league last season? Was he an integral member of that team last season? Yeah, but it don't mean you were world class, really. No, I'm, dis I'm, I'm disagreeing. I think Raheem Sterling is world class. Standard. But I, I, I hear what you're saying. You're, you're more thinking about the finishing. Yeah. One, one element of his game. One element of his game. One element of his game. It's a big sometimes, element when you play playing a number Raheem. nine. I'm telling you. you don't, he's not a number nine. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, he's not a number nine. Was he That's where he plays, though. He's not a number nine. He plays the same position as Mane. Left side. But could I just say something? Who's, because who's wait, 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 Mane, wait, 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 Mane, 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 Raheem Sterling. Okay, okay. Thierry, <laughs> Thierry Henry, Thierry Henry ain't a great defender from the front. Yeah, does that mean that he can't be world class? No, no, no. I'm just saying. There's one attribute of his game. No, one attribute of his game that isn't working. Ain't, ain't working. I'm really a real. I'm a real. Yeah. So you're saying that he can't be considered world class? Let me throw you this. Are you selling him watches? You got Terry Henry goes through one on one with a keeper. Sterling goes through one on one. No, I'm not saying Sterling's a world class finisher. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is you can't say because he's got one attribute that ain't you don't think is top. That means that detracts him from being world class. Are you mad? Let us know in the comments. No man. No, he, 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 he brings a lot to the table. I get all that merchants. I guarantee you as well. When you talk to the right backs in this league, yeah, yeah and you go, you got Raheem Sterling no, this he's weekend. Tops. They're going to be going. I would rather many, many more men than. Just, what? Wan Bissaka took his bibbing. Yeah, get ready to eat. Does that make him world class when he plays against Raheem Sterling? Oh, oh bro, you, exactly. you've lost a lot of value oh, in the talk. Okay. <laughs> you've lost a it's lot of truth. value, bro. It's the truth, and you okay. know I'm not lying. Okay, is 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 Mane world class? Yes, he is. Hundred percent. Can better, I flip this conversation? Hundred percent. I want to talk to you about Gnabry world class. <laughs> yeah, probably. So um, Gnabry's but, but, world class, but, but Sterling but, isn't. But listen, listen, listen. Let's let's let's. Is Lee West Thane world class? No, he's not. What? No, he's not. What? Wow, wow. wow. Right. Not. Bro, leave, he's leave. Not. He's not. Bro. No, you can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> Leroy Sane is not Leroy... world class. Bro, you what are you talking about? Everyone in a world class box. You what can't do that, really. Sane is can, can I put a lid on this carnage? I want to talk to you about Liverpool defending 3v3 on the halfway line. Sane weren't even better than Raheem Sterling at City, for goodness sake. That's why he got shipped. Bro. Talk to me about that, Rio. About Have defending you been seeing him in Bayern? Right there on the halfway line. That's just confidence in your ability. Go man for man. That's, that's amazing. Did he get it right though? Because I think they was getting, I mean, they got the draw, which on the balance of things, getting the draw away from home at your rivals is probably Klopp the Klopp said result. it after the game. Klopp said in so many words that like when there's time on the ball, maybe you do need to drop a little bit yeah. and don't be so brave. That's what, he, that's a fact. Like you can say, oh, it's brave and it's great. It look, oh, the way that they played, the nerve that they had, I understand that it is to do that is, is like, it's borderline suicidal at times. If the man on the ball has time and his head's up and can see and he's a player like De Bruyne, you have to turn mm. around and sprint back to goal. Mm. And you've got, you got runners like Sterling. And you've got people like Sterling you running. Pace, pace. Carl Walker on the other side yeah. sometimes running in. And you think to yourself, well, you need to run back. Like, it, it could have been two or three or four nil first half. Like, because of that reason of not be, of, of holding your line and oh, you playing really that? high. You mitigate that with an extra man or do you mitigate that with... With distance and drop it. Yeah, run back to your goal, mate. Yeah. You got to run back, and, and with the pace that the machines that they've got in that team, especially the two centre backs, they're they're road runners. Like you, you see when Sterling went through and he got he got Virgil Van Dijk stood him up one v one. Out of respect, Sterling turned out mm. and didn't try and go through. If he was playing against someone else, he's going without out the reputation. He's going straight at him and going. He's getting a shot off. Great, but, but it was it was unbelievable. Ooh. But what I mean is on the halfway line and and just in your half and someone's got time on the ball. Bro, it's just to stand up like that, you're asking for trouble. I think you're asking for trouble if you, you're not as fast as that player. Mm. If you're if you're confident in your speed, then I wouldn't mind going like that. I but you, like, I think I think you stand there ready to run yeah, back with that player. Only, but how many times would, would they, they they were through? Mm. Like, the goal that Raheem Sterling scored, uh, 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 a hair's whisker. Yeah, do you know what I mean? The pace, mm. but and you can't get back. Even being mm. Someone like Sterling, pace. I don't care, Virgil yeah, van Dijk whoever it is, Usain Bolt, you can't get back when the timing of the pass and yes. the timing of the run's perfect. You, you, there's no there's no recovery. That's the problem for me. Uh, but the risk and... It's, it's all, sorry, it's all about risk and reward. Yeah. yeah, They're taking big risks to get the rewards and they've got a 2-2 draw at the Etihad. They're buzzing. Final question for everyone on this table and you guys watching. Is Raheem world class? Listen, <laughs> I take it back, by the way. I don't think Nabry's world class. I'll take that one back. But who is winning the league this year? City. Is it Man City, City or Liverpool? City. City for me. It's got to be them now. City's that. run's a little smoother. Yeah. Yeah. Not like you can't drop points on that, but Liverpool's, when you just look at it, it looks trickier. I think there'll still be bumps in. I don't think both teams go winning all games. That City-Wolves game, man, I can see that. I think problem. City will go all the whole thing winning all the games. Winning every game? Yeah. They could. 
But I think yesterday, yesterday's game was the decider. Whoever gets it wins that will win the league. Yeah, for me, yeah. my opinion. Yeah, they definitely leave happier. If, if Liverpool would have won yesterday, I think they win the league. Momentum mm, would have been yeah. mad. Momentum would have been mad. Mm. All right. So City, City, City. That's yeah. what you think. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'll rattle through the rest of the results this weekend. Chelsea smacking up Southampton 6 0. Southampton got that in a month there. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Like, normally yeah. nine, isn't it? Normally nine. Random ones. <laughs> Man, yeah, so Alonso with the goals, Mount with two goals, Werner scored a couple, hitting crossbar, mm. posts, everything. Mount's goals Habits are as banging, well. bro. Mount, banging. yeah. Baller. Yeah. yeah. Good Mount, is, you know yeah. what? Mount is a mad player. I like watching yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it's on and off the ball, that's what I love about it. He gives you both sides of the game. Like, mm. but Young players watching the game, if you watch Mount, the way he plays, he's efficient with it mm. and he can bang. But like, it's the, it's the work ethic and the, the positions he takes up defensively, like ridiculous. He that's goes. why he'll always play for England because I think you can rely on him. Mm. We got Tottenham beating up Aston Villa 4-0, Son with a goal. Uh, so, so yeah, Son with a goal. Okay, sorry, sorry, Joel. I, uh, right. I hate saying it. I hate saying it. I hate saying it. I hate saying it. But Tottenham, their front three, mad, mad, best, it? best in the league. Best in the league. Best in the league. This moment in time, best in the league. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. better like, for form. Yeah, for yeah, me, form. even though I prefer Liverpool's on papers the best and are the better front three. But after Liverpool, their front three is the best. Oh, no. I know. Form. I okay. Agree. Even Mike, the, what's the guy number twenty one? What's the guy's name? Who came? Kulusevski. Kulusevski. What a baller! And they got to make yeah. that permanent. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent made that permanent. Yeah. Just yeah, quickly, months. Harry Kane's flying. Yeah, like even the last couple of games they've scored big numbers. He ain't scored, but he's had a hand in most of the goals. Mm -hmm. Bad player. We saw Benzema. Yeah. Midweek, Lewandowski always doing it. Yeah. One to three. How do you rate them three? One to three. Yeah. Lewandowski number one. That's what I said. Benzema number two. That's what I said. Kane three. Benzema. You know what? Even though I love Benzema, yeah. but my man, my, my, my Munich, different been, gravy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> different, different gravy. How are you on that? Yeah, different yeah, gravy. Same. I love Benzema, and we saw against um, Chelsea, like, wow. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, but you, big, what separates them from Harry Kane is the big game factor as well. We've and being at the big clubs. Yeah. yeah. Having the, that pressure. Yeah, that pressure to, to, to win trophies and score goals in them big pressure situations, mm -hmm. that's the difference. I think Man City should go back in for Kane in the summer. 100%. They need to go and get him. 100%. If, yeah, if, they, if they get him, yeah. it's a wrap for the next yeah, 30, yeah. Not yeah. 30 yeah. years. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Three years. Next three years, they're winning Done. everything. Uh, Leicester. Why, why don't you think Son gets the love that he definitely No, he does get the love. Yeah, nah, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him at United. Is Son well past? I think he is, you know. And Son isn't. And no, Son is not. And Son is not. You can't laugh like that. He's his son. What's this son guy does? is, dude? You're, you're discrediting them. I love Son. I love Son. He's bad. I love Son. Don't do that. Yeah. Let, me tell you, let me tell you the difference. Because when Son is in and goal, he's scoring. You know that's going in, bro. Mm. You're, so not so you're not even doubting. You're not even not even doubting. He doesn't miss shot. Not like Sterling. Not like Sterling. And you know it, Rio. I can't take this disrespect, man. I can't take it. I can't take the disrespect. Keep it real here. I can't take it. Listen, son, I don't know what it is. He's too son. good for Tottenham. He's too good yeah, for Tottenham. Of course. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't son know is, is nasty. Isn't it? Proper. No, he's right. ruthless. He's no, ruthless. No, ruthless. ruthless. Is that a term that you, you associate with Raheem Sterling? Ruthless? No. Uh, I would say Sterling no, is, no. is absolutely dependable. Oh, <laughs> you know, wait, you know what some reminds you? Of? called you dependable, you've been wounded. You know, oh. <laughs> hey, you know what some reminds you? Honestly, I'm, I know people like Cristiano, like back in the day, when he goes through and goal, you know it's a goal. It's a goal. Mm. Bang, the way he run, way he run the speech. Oh, phenomenal. I love him. Oh, right, phenomenal. Love I, him. Love, I love him. I yeah, love, I love, him. I love him. I just can't get the fact that you can say that he's world class and Sterling isn't. But That's my point. I, I Deal with it. I think he's better than Sterling. Yeah. I think he is. Sober. I can't get my head around Le Leroy Sane. He says not world class. I can't but get my head around not, that. Though. I can't Come get on. my head around that, bro. My, listen, there was a reason <laughs> why my man couldn't even really do it at City. Do you know what I mean? Like it. Oh, because you're, you're not good at one club, you can't no, go to Ross and be no, world I didn't class. Say that, though. So, Gerard right. Piquet is not world class. Oh, it, <laughs> he loves Gerard Piquet, shout out to me. Just ask that's him for a friend. I'm asking that's for a go friend. That's his argument. <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Uh, you need to know. All right, so Leicester, Leicester beating Palace 2 1. I think it don't matter at this stage. After that Arsenal win, yeah. Everyone knows that Vieira's had a good season. I'm mm. glad Lookman got on the score sheet um, for Leicester. Cause... What happened to Arsenal this weekend, anyway? Well, hey, you ask me, tell me, man. Why have we not discussed it? Well, we're going just to brush it. Rise over it. I thought, oh, this on that one. Oh, okay, cool. What happened to Arsenal then? Wait, we, we lost in it. Are you, still, are, you, are you still out, uh, in or out? Did you see that Odegaard goal? Woo! Banger. Odegaard? Yeah. What about it? Did you see the goal? What was the score? Woo! 
Ooh. Could be one nil then. Yeah. Two one. Right. Anyway, yeah. are you are te- in or out? Are you are you gonna ignore the goal? What did you think of the goal? No, big goal, big goal. But, 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 but no, no, no one remembers goal. He lose the game. Thank you, bro. No one remembers goal. He lose the game. You need to come here and back me. No, but yeah. I'm, I'm I'm being real. Ah. No one remembers them goals. We got you got to win the game. You got to win the game. Need to get right. Listen, can I can I put something out there as well? This weekend, we've seen an absolute love fest between Liverpool and City, all cuddling after the game and this, that, and the other. Do not tell me this is a rivalry, right? No, it's not a rivalry. This is a rivalry where I think they've come yeah, second. One's come first that. and second, mm-hmm. like, twice. Yeah. In 30 years, Liverpool have won one time. It's like calling United and Blackburn a rivalry, mm. right? Yeah. It's, it's not a rivalry. It's, it's Carragher that's was, pushing it. There was nine years where City and Arsenal won every single title, no one got a sniff. It's mad. And we was coming first and second. From 96 to 04, yeah. you lot won it six times, we won it three times. Yeah. The rivalry is yeah, not just not... about the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's everything that goes I alongside think, yeah, it. Yeah, where the Premier League was at the game. time. The pantomime that goes with every, it, like yeah. the, the mind games and, mm-hmm. and the managers going back and forth against yeah. each other. That adds yeah. to it. That, that makes the he rivalry. Versus yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even when I'm like, Gary Neville got punched So Alex Ferguson. <laughs> no, I'm saying things like that. Like Gary Neville got, got a, a rib, like rib punch. Like got Vieira just banged him up. Yeah, the penalties with Ruud van Nistelrooy. Yeah. Rivalry. But None even with, you know, you know, we see Pep after the game doing that massive thing with Klopp. Yeah. Yeah. You never would have seen Fergie no. and Wenger doing that. Punch. Yeah. Yeah. Bring one, back one, hating one, people. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I know Pizza, that Pizza Gate, bro. Yeah. Oh, in the, in the Crazy. People getting gripped up by the throat weren't in the change. Yeah, yeah. people just stop all that. Yeah. Mad, 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 mad. Mad. <laughs> I ain't talking about it, bro. Yeah, is, it? Oh, is it out there who threw it? it was, no, we know who threw it. Fabregas threw it. Fabregas threw it. I don't think he meant to throw it at the gaffer, though. I think he just dashed it out yeah. the door and the gaffer was walking past. <laughs> Madness. That's a rivalry. Oh, what have these two done? Sent each other flowers. Hey, all right, look, I know you lot mad respect for Sir, Sir Alex, but what did he do like, when the. I can't even remember. What no, the no, was no, I there? No, obviously, it did hit him like that. Oh, the, 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 last, the, the last in memory for me was that a security guard was having to hold him back from going, trying to get so in, their, in, their, in their change room. Mash up. I remember. Fabregas. Is it? Yeah, that was, that was put him in a that's what I remember. He's who told us what had oh, all gone on. He, said, he was covered in spit as well, wasn't he, as well? I don't, know, yeah. I don't know, but I don't know, but I, just, yeah. I know that he, listen, you know what he's like when he, if mm-hmm. his head went, mate, that was it. But, <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, cool. Moving on, because I want to get to the Kieran section. You guys, make sure you stay tuned. It's going down when we're talking to Kieran. Uh, West Ham versus Brentford. Oh, Brentford doing the damn thing mm, again. Yeah. Right, Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, Wolves, Newcastle. Newcastle win, winning 1 0. Leeds versus Watford. Leeds winning 3 0. Hey, listen, man, that puts a bit of pressure on Frank Lampard, big doesn't result, it? Big result. Big mm. result. Yeah. Um, Burnley versus Norwich. Norwich winning as well. That, that changes things around. Steve, can you read out the fan questions? I can. Quickly, please. Liam S says, Who's at risk? In the current United team, if Ten Hag comes in, is Ronaldo? Hmm. I think every player. I don't think there'll be one player in that team that Bruno. Uh, Bruno's not a risk. Bruno, yeah, Bruno just signed a new deal. Yeah, he's not a risk. Every, I think everyone, everyone else. Can and no, I don't know about De Gea. I just think every. I think that everybody will be. I think it's like when any manager comes in, whether it's Ten Hag or anyone or any club. As soon as a new manager comes in, you know, you've mm-hmm. been at clubs and a new manager mm-hmm. comes in, everybody's in audition position. But I, I feel like some people at Man United just want to leave, though. Mm. That's just my opinion. When I, from the outside looking, I feel like some of them might actually want to leave. Mm. So it's not a single player that could leave that I'd cry about. Not one. Not Bruno? No. Really? No, I think he's been good, but no, if, he, been if a... he wanted to go, I'd yeah. be like, okay, later. Mm. Boy, well, anyone? Um, I, I agree with what Bob Lisa said. Every single one of them. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'll get on with the questions. Every single one of them has got something to prove. Not one of them can sit there and chill and be like, I'll be fine. He'll, he'll buzz off me. Even Bruno. You know, and I think Bruno, like you said, probably going to be fine and probably being like, right, he's one I can rely on and I'll build a little bit around him. But like I said, even if Bruno was like, do you know what? I want to go win stuff. All right, there's the fucking door. It's in a bit. We've, we've had better players leave. Um, J44 says, when do Rio and Steve win- see United win the league again? And will the structures in place be enough? Kieran, do you want to answer that? We said that already, isn't it? Yeah, I think another 10 years. Another 10 years? Yeah. You might be right at the end of it, you know? You if know you what? get I, it right, it yeah. could be five. Yeah, I, I just feel like... Or it ain't before then. Yeah, I can't see it. You, the new manager, they, they come in, give them time, please. And just as a United fan, just think, don't think next season you win a league, you're not going to win this league. Mm-hmm. Just think long term now, like how we're doing at Arsenal. We, we, we don't expect it, right? I don't expect it for another 10 years. 
Do you expect to win the league in 10 years? Be real, bro. Joe. 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 For real, I think. Maybe I'm just too honest. He's going to have so much grey in this beard by then. I hate saying it about both clubs, Arsenal and me, but we're just not there. Joe looks broken right now. Okay, maybe I'm being a. No, I think it's 10 years. We got a good squad. I think Man United just need to wait till 11. No, you don't. Man United just need to wait till Klopp and Pep go. And but at. By that time, when they go, have it in place the foundation. Foundation. When's clock to strike? Oh four. I don't know. I mean, 2024. I don't know. Like that. But we just need everything in place for when them lot go to be ready to pounce. Last, Otherwise, last it's too long. Not before five. Yeah, but don't, years. don't you think that even when they leave, don't you think that the whole philosophy about the club's still going to be there anyway? So it's kind of like embedded in the club now for Liverpool and Man City. Well, they've still got their recruitment right, and yeah. they just plug a new guy in. They can just keep it rolling. This is what I'm saying. We say that. <laughs> uh, Alan K says, "Rio, would you rather play under Pep or Klopp?" Very hard decision. Ooh, I think. I, love I both. think. I think. I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, I love too. both, but Pep. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Because I, I feel like the ball. Yeah, I feel like you're more of a Pep player. Yeah, I'd have the ball for seventy percent. I'd be. I'd be dictating I, the whole the game. Liverpool centre halves a bit more than than Cities. Do they? Do they? Because they hold possession. In the did you see rounds. Pep when when one of his players were taking a throw in? I think it was Cancelo. I can't remember. And the way he grabbed him up. Yeah, 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 it. yeah, I yeah. I love you, it. You like all that. Yeah, stuff. I love yeah. the passion. I love the passion. Yeah. And, and you see when you speak to him, I've been lucky to be in his company a few times, and mm. you can feel the football. I love chatting about football when I was mm. a player. If the manager was ever sitting on a dinner table and, and you could hang about and ask questions, I used to love it mm. and hear them talk. I would be hanging about him like a bad smell just yeah. to find out about certain scenarios that have mm -hmm. gone on and what he thinks about the game, just to try to be a sponge. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, he's like, he, he's a genius. Did you talk to him? Yeah, I chat to him quite a bit, to be fair. And he, mm -hmm. he's, um, he's just, he just loves football, man. Yeah. And like, people that love football, we all love football, but when you can talk to someone who loves football and knows the game and has done so much great things, he's changed the game. There ain't many managers you can say in down in history you can go, oh, we changed the way everyone thinks about football. Yeah. He, he's one of them. I, I love Klopp though, man. Klopp's bad. I love his relationship with the fans and yeah. everything. I feel like he's more, you know Character. what I mean? Yeah, I run. A, I think I feel me personally, I'd run through a brick wall more for Klopp than Pep. Wow. For my, my opinion. But they're both up there though. Yeah, man. yeah. They're, they're both yeah. Un unbelievable. One man chatting to Pep just about Cruyff. Mm. Find out what he was actually all about because mm. he's the one who changed the game for everybody. Mm. Man, guys, um, we're privileged to be sitting with Kieran Richardson, mm. Premier League winner, you know. Thanks. You know mm. what I mean? Big, yeah. big, big boy in the game. I want to say thank you very much for sitting down with us. You are hosting Ballers and Watches, which is a show that's coming out on five within a couple of days. So make sure you stay tuned. Is it coming in a couple of days? Listen, a couple wow. of days. And, and even if you're watching this later on, make sure you turn on your notifications, everything subscribe because we want you guys to watch it. Can you tell us what the show is about, please? Yeah, so the show is about um, me and Poet, the host, the host in the show. We're talking shout about- Shout out to Poet. Shout out to Poet. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy Poet's on the channel. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's unbelievable, poet. honestly. Oh, yeah. When we started this, I said, we need Poet on yeah, it. Yeah, the, the, uh, the energy he brings to the show is unbelievable. Yes, yes. yes. Um, I'm he's a different person, isn't he? Wait, you know what I mean? Like, we need people that are just on different frequencies. Mate, <laughs> what is that? Michael Owen commentary. He's a different person. Of course When he turned up and I was like, he came in, he looked a bit like, not drunk, but like, just, he'd been at partying the night before. He's been out here. He was out here. He was out. And the way, when the camera went rolling, the way he just went bang and straight Bam. into it, I was like, I looked at him, I'm like, whoa. He was like, yo, bro, this is 15 years YouTube, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, serious. Yeah. When the show's about, we're talking about watches and what the footballers are wearing mm -hmm. and celebrities are wearing. And we're, yeah. we're, we're dissecting each watch, talking about what it's worth, current value. Mm -hmm. and so it's educational as yeah. well. It's not, oh yeah, just bling, bling, whatever. No. Uh, even though the, the intro is dope, I can't lie, man. You can check it out yeah, still. Uh, but besides that, it is that. But we also talk about players that you played with a lot, uh, against mm -hmm. and with as well. Yeah. So we mix it with football as well. So um, that's really interesting right? yeah and I, th I think a lot of people don't know my background as well obviously selling watches now a lot of people don't yeah. know that mm -hmm. so that's why it's a good for watch. broad talks yeah well, my, my company my company is called broad, broad talk group that's but right. the show is called broad talk broad talk so yeah. broad talks on youtube yeah broad go and check broad. it out man. yeah go and check, out, check it out plug it. Broad subscribe broad please <laughs> you know we, need we, the we, help. Got, we got the details in the, in the can couch, i just say so as no well problem. when i first heard the concept i was like this has got the potential to be an absolute cringe fest yeah but when i've seen the show mm. it's class yeah like it's it's really well done because anyone's just sitting there, oh just millionaires talking about the money yeah. the watches do one but actually it's, it's a educational really, really, man really good it's really show. good it's really really good so now we enjoyed we enjoyed it it was good good show and i think it's important for to 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 show that the young players as well young people 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 that are aspiring to have watches and stuff there is more to it than just going out and seeing a nice watch it's business it can be a business yeah. it can yeah. be something where actually you can have, you can waste a lot of money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you can also do it where you protect yeah. a bit yeah. of money as well yeah. and kieran obviously got the experience now 
I think it's interesting your journey. So obviously now you're into the watches, yeah. but can you let us know how you even started at Man United? So you, you came from West Ham, mm -hmm. right? What was that transition like in order for you to go to Man United and get scouted in the first place? Because I remember your name was ringing bells, man. Yeah, so obviously I was at uh, West Ham before at Man United. Right. I left to go to Man U when I was 14, 15. Mm -hmm. um, the scout at the time was called Malcolm Fidgen. Same scout, David Beckham took him to Man United. Mm -hmm. You know, he's passed away now, um, sadly. And he said, you know, come up to Manchester United for like a trial, basically thing. I was like, yo, my contract was running out, running out at West Ham. And obviously Man United is a massive, massive club. And I was like, <laughs> blabbergasted that a club like this would want me to go up there. Mm -hmm. So it was a great opportunity for me. I went up there, loved it, man, from the, from the straight away, you know, from meeting the coaches, the club, the stature of the club. Even though West Ham was a great, with a youth academy, it was mm -hmm. great, great banner at West Ham. And, you know, we saw people getting a chance at West Ham. But for me, it was a different gravy going to a massive club like Man United compared to where I was at the time. What was different about it? Everything, the whole setup, the professionalism. It was just everything, mate. The aura around the place. This, for me, the, the main thing, reason why I went to Man United was the coaching. The coaches, for me, caught my eye straight away. But when I went there, it was a complete different ball game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's weird, like when you sign for Man United and then you go there as a young kid, mm. Did Alex Ferguson have any input? Did you meet him? Did you speak to him? Yeah, so I, I met him once. So you, I think people see it. They don't know that pictures with the players, like young players. He always takes pictures with players. So I met him. But the, even though I knew how big the club was and I was in, in awe of meeting so Alex Ferguson, but it was, there was even the people under him, like the, um, Paul McGuinness was one of, the, one of the main reasons why I went to Man United. I know he doesn't work there no more, but... He works for England now. He's worked for England. Oh, the FA. One of yeah. The so he was a massive influence on me going there. This uh, My youth team coach, Neil Bailey, was unbelievable for me. You know, Chucky was great. Brian McClure. These guys were so like... I just loved everything about the club. I went to school. I went to school in Manchester and Sal. Mm -hmm. in, I was in Diggs. Where, you was, know, you, where was your Diggs? On Cecil Avenue. So we, so we had... Um, I was in my digs, me, David Jones, we were in one house. Next door was Darren Fletcher, John O'Shea. Yeah, we, so my road was like, a few lads made it from that road. So what was it like going into that change room as a young kid? What, what, what was the atmosphere like? What was the energy like? Well, first they, team they or? Warm? Yeah, going into the first team dressing room. You signed 99, didn't you? 2000. 2000. Yeah, one single. What a minute. time to sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight after. So you were there before Rio. Yeah, yeah I was there yeah, before yeah. Rio because I, when when Rio signed, when Rio, obviously I know Rio a long time before Man United. When Rio signed, even mentioned my name in his press conference. They said they said to him, oh, "Do you know anyone at the club?" He went, "Yeah, I know Kim Richardson." And I was I was like some young kid, like fifteen, six, I'm seventeen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? what? <laughs> and I remember when you signed, when you yeah. came in and doing your medical, I saw you, mm. your beat bleach blonde hair thing, yeah. <laughs> skinny guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but nah. Massive club, man. Great memories. Just Great shit you'd have got on Twitter now. So if you uh, signed the way you signed. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you cost 30 mil and yeah. you do your thing, no one can tap nothing to you. 100%. You know I mean? uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you cost big, big peas yeah. and you don't produce, people have got their guns out. It's yeah. true. So you make your debut for Man United. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what's that feeling like? And did you know you're making your debut that day? Um, obviously, you get told you're on the you're, you're on the bench. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I didn't start. I think I came on. Mm -hmm. What what day are you talking about? The actual. I think it was my debut. Man United debut. Was it? I think I remember. Uh, first day was twenty third of October, two thousand and two. Champions, Champions League, League against Olympiacos. Yeah, number forty two. Mm -hmm. um, and for Olympiacos, Karen Boo. Is it Karen Boo? Remember him? Karen Boo. Ooh, yeah. he, was French, he was playing French. for them. I'm sure he was. Yeah, I'm like. Yeah. These players, you know, you see on TV, yeah. but you're you're nervous, like any player, you're nervous, but you just want to get on there and just show people what you can do, basically. And I remember just blowing out my ass. You know, <laughs> different different levels. Yeah. Different levels to this. Different the pace. Adrenaline dump or just both. It's the it's the pace. It's you. Very, it's very hard to get up to the pace of the to the first team. It's comp there's, a, there's a massive gap between reserve football and the premier or the first team. The, the ball just zings around so quickly, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you can't get used to it. And I, I, I found that very difficult as a young, young player. I found it hard to get used to the pace of the game. Not until when I was like 24 and I, 23, I was like a strong guy. I kind of found it easy, but it's very hard, the pace of the football. Is it difficult because the players, are they talking in your ear, especially at then? What's going on? What What's it like? Um... Yeah, but it's not really, not really the the, the players. It's more actually, honestly, it's the, the way the ball is getting zipped about. Mm. It's it's like even when you come from the the reserve hmm? on twenty three training pitch to the first team training pitch. Yeah, the difference in speed really? of the ball moving and mm. decision making is just yeah. like 
Whoa. And you and you know straight away, like, you've got Roy Keane on your ass, mate. He's on you. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing things wrong, he's, he's in your ear straight away. What are you doing? Stop getting touch at. Oh, just get out of here. Mm. <laughs> you're crap. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But it, it was good. You needed characters like that. And you look mm. at Man United now, nah, they ain't got characters like that. How many youngsters crumble and Roy Keane gets on them? Yeah, I've seen loads of them. Yeah, yeah. I've seen loads crumble. Oh. I've seen loads I've crumble. I've seen some ruthless shouts as well. Yeah. Like shouts that you, you go, that's too much. I, I actually <laughs> said a couple of times to him, I remember one time vividly, I won't say the player, but I did say like, that's a bit strong. And he kind of laughed like he does, like I did knowingly a little bit, but said it now. I feel like, I feel like with Roy, he, he would test people as well. Yeah. Like see if you're really up for it. I remember one time I had, I had an argument with Roy in training and he, he was in the wrong and I was, me, my character, even though they, I look up to these guys, but I feel like, you know, you gotta be, you gotta strong, have, you gotta yeah. struggle as well. Yeah. I remember I said something to him and he was, oh, he was arguing with me. And then obviously I realized, you know, okay, cool. And I went into a canteen in, in Carrington, in the canteen, getting my food. And he bopped up to me in, in the um, canteen. He came over to me and went, you know what, Kieran? I'm gonna say sorry for what I've said to you. And, oh, wow. And I looked at him like, yo, you know what? He, he knows when he's a really like, he knows when he's wrong. You love him even more. I love, I, when he said to me like, even though, I forgot, even though I forgot about it, I'm going when, off the field. I just forget about everything. I mean, I'm going back. He came into me, you know, I was in the wrong here. I'm sorry about that. And it made the respect for me go even higher. You know what I mean? His captain, Roy King, saying sorry. Mm. He, he didn't need to. You know what I'm mm. saying? Yeah. And, pe and a lot of people don't see that side of Roy. They just think he's mm. the grumpy old man hammering oh, everyone. He's much more calm and like, yeah. he likes to laugh. He'd mm. be one of the guys taking a mick out of everyone in the training ground and stuff yeah. like that. But he had that soft side to him or that, that more chilled side to him. But when it came to the game and, and and training and stuff like that, he was he and was serious. He, and, and what a player as well. Yeah, man. Honestly, I, I never really see him give the ball away. No. Really? Honestly, I never really see him give the ball away. That's what people, people don't never appreciate that. People don't no. appreciate that. Oh, he's a great so tackler. He's no, 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 no. People, so no, much no. more than that, bro. I never see him give the ball away ever. His touch was unbelievable. Mad. Do you reckon he would have played that? Like, for example, you see, we spoke about the City Liverpool game. The intensity was high. Level easy, easy, Do you reckon easy. he would be able to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In holding, course. holding role, or yeah. when he was younger, in even in the eight bombing on. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. In Liverpool's team, easy. He could play the holding role in City. Easy. Don't get the ball away. Don't wow. get the ball away. And he don't play just say. If he used to play, the ball's coming to him. He off the zips the ball, back, ball and mate. Go bang into the number eight or the number ten front man. Bang mm. through the lines. And what I, like, what I love about Roy as well, he was never afraid to take the ball. He'd mm. always won it. No matter what the situation, how tight it was, give it me. Give it to me. I don't care. There's five guys in my back. Just give me the ball. Even if he's made a mistake, yeah, matter, me mate, he's ball. always wants he's the ball. He's not hiding. Well, never. When, when hiding. did he make a mistake? Exactly. Never. Yeah, him, him, and, him and Vieira are the same. Yeah. Give me you'd, the ball. You'd hear Vieira shouting at his centre half. So he didn't give him the ball. The ball, the ball would like bypass Vieira and go to another player, and you would see Vieira sometimes screaming at the centre half. Give me the ball. Mm. Like they're the players. You think right? Proper, proper captain he was, man. Balls, yeah. Yeah. When you what what were your thoughts of Kieran in the first team as Man United? Because obviously, you won the FA Youth Cup, didn't yeah. you? Mm. Like first first lot to win it since, since class of ninety two. Class right? of ninety two, yes. What were your thoughts? And we'll go, get back to that in a mm -hmm. second. But what were your thoughts of Kieran? What were his main attributes that you liked when he came into the first team? He weren't scared, which is a big thing for young players. A lot of young players come over and you look at them and you go, "You're intimidated already." He wasn't. Um, speed. Um, and he could cross the ball as well. But I what I think was great about Kieran, he could take information. Like, and that's what I was gonna ask you as well. I think Kieran could have played for England for 10 years as a left back, if he stayed left back. And I think the club wanted you to play left back, mm -hmm. but you was like, yeah, I think you went away of England and done really well, didn't you? And was playing higher up the pitch. Yeah. And thought, I'm gonna have, I explain, you can, you can explain. I just feel like my whole career, from young, from eight years old, all the way to end of my career, I always, well not end of my career, but from, to Man United, I've always been a midfield player. Mm. I've always been an attacker. You know, you'd never say, you, it's like asking a striker, go play centre back. You'd like, you look at him like, it's foreign. And I, I remember Carlos Queros, which was was a great coach at Man United. You know, he, he was great for me as well. He, I remember he came up to me one time, he's like, you know what, Kieran, maybe you should think about left back. And I was like, what? And, that, and it, I, I was surprised he said that. But it's weird because I feel like he was, he, he could see it. And a lot of people would say to me, you know what, you could play there, bro. And when you look at left backs now or full backs now, these guys are just proper serious ballers, mm. right? Yeah, they are. The way that like midfield players play there you go. So, there we go. Yeah. And it's like, should I, at a time I didn't really, I, I kind of like just said, no, nah, not for me. But when I'm going back, looking at it, I feel like, cause I ended up playing left back anyway for mm. half of my career. Mm. So he, he was right. And so that's Ferguson was right. But, and I had my I had a little stint at left back at Man United. Mm. Um, Rio, you thought he was good there as well, didn't it? Yeah, I was, you could play for England there. Yeah, Easy. yeah, yeah. 100%. I, 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 I backed myself in that position, even when I was up, 
Even though I went to Sunderland, I was in midfield, but... People used to go up against him 1v1 in training and I used to think they don't feel confident getting past him because no, he was no, no. so quick and he was strong for his size as yeah. well. So like, I used to think, and with what he, because he, I know he's got the midfield attributes with the ball, mm. it's like a perfect storm. And obviously yeah. Patrice Ever comes mm. and becomes that player. Yeah. So, so before Patrice Ever comes, yes. that position could have been yours, basically. I reckon they yeah. don't sign Patrice if he said, I'm going to stay to be a left back. Got you, got you. Who was up at the time? It was Sylvester was playing there. Gab uh, Gab Gabriel, Gabriel Hines. Gabriel Hines was but there. But he was being a chopper, one of those, mm. one of them mm. were Liverpool and that. So that Gab was never going to Gabby, Gabby was funny on an aeroplane. Yeah. He's scared of oh, flying. Oh, scared. He used to cry, oh, used to cry on the plane. So yeah. funny. He used to cry. Obviously, I'm scared, I'm scared of flying as well. Yeah, but I'm not He used to like cry on planes. He's, I look at him like, bro, you're right. Yeah. He's you, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You couldn't Every see him. Game. You couldn't see him. His head really? was between his own Bro. knees on the plane. Right? And you could hear him go. Oh. He, was a he, was, he was a character though, wasn't he? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Man. But you're right. But, you know, they signed Everett. He was a, had a great career. He is mm. what it is. And yeah. I went on to go to play for Sunderland. But you have to remember as well, right? You asked him to play left back. But he, my man's playing for England in midfield and, and, and mm. taking free kicks and scoring free kicks mm. against America. Nah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not and he's thinking, hold on. They're saying on one end, I'm going to be England's midfield general. And then the next minute, you want me to come and play left back. Mm. He, it's, it's a hard one, but yeah, as you said, I understand. Yeah, I understand. And as you said, throughout my career, I ended up playing left back anyway. So it's, and you know, we just, as I said, we see fullbacks now, they're like main players in these teams. You see Trent, we see Reese, we see um, Cancelo. These are, bro, these are mm. proper serious players. And the way the game is now, it's just the fullbacks are big, big importance. You spoke about being a little bit weak when you first came into the first team, not that strong. You go and you have your loan spells, West mm. Brom especially. What do you learn over there? That was the making of me as my as for Kieran Richardson this this spell because I remember before the loan, I think we played Leeds away at Ellen Road. I think we got beat as a cup cup game and I was I was I was dead I was mm. dead, and I remember my dad saying to me, "Bro, like your days are numbered, geez." Yeah. My, 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 dad. my dad's a, my dad's a G. He keeps yeah. it real. He's like, "Bro, your your days are numbered." I'm, You're done. You're <laughs> done, mate, mate. I think I was like eighteen or something. You know what, mate? Your days are numbered. Cheers, lads. No, no, so I was, I, I was 19. He went, your day, he went to me, your days are numbered, lads. Basically, you know, it is what it is, basically. And then, what, and so, then, so Alex says something, mate. No, no, what do you mean? What do you say? I think he said something like, this could do with sitting down or something like that. He said something like, you could go, you can go have a load or I can't, I can't, I can't remember, but, but he, he, this is, this is what I'm saying, the brilliance of Alex Ferguson. He knows when the right time to send people out. When, yeah. they, when, when the things are going not too well, send him out. And now when I went to West Brom, obviously, Robson was the manager, mm -hmm. Robbo, which is Captain Marvel. And I, I, I had a chance because Norwich or West Brom, and they, they were both fighting relegation. And I, obviously, I chose West Brom with the connection with Man United. And, you know, we stayed up. I had a great time there. Um, obviously, from there, I played for England. And I remember when I played for England, I did my thing, scored goals. I went back into Man United in the summer, went back to Man United in the summer. And I... My, I walked back into the reserve changing room, bro. My, my, like, I, I, I didn't have, I was never in the first team. I wasn't in the first team changing room at that time when I left uh, Man U. I remember I walked back into the uh, reserve changing room, sat there as a full England, England international, was sitting there with the, all the reserves. I remember Gary Neville came into the changing room, was like, "What are you doing there, bro?" I was like, "I'm just waiting for the gaffer to tell me, like, or whoever to tell me to come in." Well, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. Basically, mm -hmm. he's like, "No, no, no, you're in the first team, bro." He picked up all my kit up, took it into the first team changing room without even speaking to. The gaffer. Difference is though, you, he was captain at the time, wasn't he? Yeah, I, yeah, mm. I think yeah, he was captain at the time. Mm. Like Roy, no, no, Roy, 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 yeah. But you can't do that though. No. If you just walk in, throw no. your, your bag. Yeah, but that shows what I'm saying. There's respect levels. Yeah. He's saying I can't walk in there, and then all no. of a sudden I get told, "Oh, what are you yeah. doing there?" Because yeah. because you, you, it could have happened where he walks in there, and everyone goes, "Oh, he played for England, have you?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, hundred no, percent. Yeah. Honestly, the, the, obviously you have to respect it and. Obviously, Gary Neville did his thing, and mm. I remember um, Alex Ferguson said, "Yeah, of course you're in there, mate. Get in there, of course you oh, are." Oh wow! Yeah, and it, but that it, it took it took me to become a full England international to get into the first like, changing room. That's, that's crazy. Nice. But talk to me about the flash reputation because for so, you know what it was like back mm -hmm. in the day. The media used to, to control the narrative, yeah, <clears throat> and we didn't know what was true, what weren't true. I used mm. to hear things like you're buying Ferraris, mm. doing a madness. Like what what was actually going? Can I just start before he starts? Yeah. I remember. He was at United. Young lads couldn't buy big cars. Mm. And I never see Kieran in a big car. Yeah. He signed for Sunderland. And my brother, I was saying, that's Kieran. He settled in. He said, yeah, by the way, he's got a nice car. He's all, man. He's got a nice car. But a Porsche or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, Kieran's got a Porsche. He ain't got a Porsche. He went, yeah, yeah, yeah no, yes. He said that like, for, like, for ages. I said, no, nah, i never seen him in a Porsche. Wow. But he never drove the Porsche into Man United. <laughs> yeah. I feel like 
when you're a young player, even 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 senior players, we never really wanted to like show off. We even though we could buy these things, like mm. I remember when Phil Neville bought the Ferrari, red Ferrari. Got hammered. He got hammered for it. You know, we're talking Phil Neville, great player, and he's been playing for many years. But we just feel like we, you know, we just play things down. We don't need to be showing off what we got. We're just trying to win leagues out here. Do you know what I'm saying? It's wow. weird, but we're it, just trying to win. Can It's true though. It's crazy. Carry on. When Phil never bought that red Ferrari, mate, he, I think he drove it about four times. Yeah. He got pelted. But, but people but, were blasting balls at <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember? Defo. Um, <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? But I, I was saying in my show the other day, an article came out about me apparently. Um, is this the baby Bentley thing? No, not the baby. That's the, this is what I'm saying. There's so much things. That was had, a Chrysler on it. Yeah, it was a Chrysler. But there's so much things had his media can portray players, but we didn't have a voice back then. We didn't, even mm. though I wasn't. We, didn't, we couldn't go on Twitter or I couldn't go on Instagram and say, I haven't got a Bentley, I've got a Chrysler or this. But I, there was an article saying how Roy Keane, I, I went to training playing loud music in my car and Roy Keane come up to me and said, basically, go home, you're not training. Mm. Turn your music down, you're not training. And he's like, articles like that can sway fans. Like, oh, he's, That's never did, that, did that even did that happen? happen? No, it didn't happen, never happened. But the, the article was better off saying, Roy Keane come up to me and said, turn your music down. And I would have gone, yes, Roy. I would turn it down because Roy Keane's my captain. I listen to him what he says, but no, he didn't say to me go home. It's unrealistic. A player, I couldn't go to. I couldn't go to a player and say go home. Hmm. Only only Silas Ferguson can do that, or a coach who's got authority over me. Players don't have authority over players, mm. even though he's a captain. Yeah, but I would have said. I would have said no, Roy. Yeah, you know what I mean? I'm not going to go home. But even though he didn't say it, but I'm saying yeah, about yeah. how yeah, yeah, how these articles go out yeah. and it shows like. They paint the picture about me, even though it's not true. Do you know and what I'm you, saying? You said, and you said when we spoke off air, you com you compared it to the Raheem Sterling stuff. That that's what they might do to the young black players at the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, times have changed. We've got changed more, shall I say? There's a voice, and you can put it straight. Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel, and how did that affect you as a player? Um, it's, as I said, it's hard. I I I, I did feel like. Me as a kid, I, I even even now I still I feel the same. But media sometimes portray black players completely different to white players, mm. and I know it's hard to hear that sometimes. But for me, remember, I'm I'm, I'm mixed race. I'm a, I'm black, and when people see me black, I always feel like they would word things differently and portray a young black player completely different to a white player. Mm. Um, even now, we see it with Raheem Sterling. You know when he. The way they the way they word things about him. he actually came out and spoke about it and he, yeah, he put he, he put he was he, one of the first to he's really one of the first. change the and narrative I, and I respect that mm -hmm. but when my, I was playing when we was playing we we didn't come out and say that maybe because we're not so confident at doing that so that's why I took my hat off to him mm -hmm. takes takes guts to do that you know what I'm saying to come out and say that the yeah. way they reported Phil Foden buying his mama house mm -hmm. and Marcus buying his mama house was yeah. entirely different this is what I'm saying young Mancunian boys. this is what I'm saying it's 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 not it's not nice seeing that. And that's the positive positive power of social media. Now. Yeah. Now, like when we played, we didn't have either the confidence or mm. the, that we didn't feel we would have the support in the game yes. and externally mm. to be able to come out and speak like that. Um, where the players now with social media, no one's chatting for me now. Mm. You, it can't be like misconstrued. I've put it out on my social media platform. It's me talking. Yeah. Simple. Mm. Different. And I feel I feel like the media would always portray me as like a as you said baby Bentley crew and things like that. It's not nice because it can sway opinions of, of fans. They'll just naturally think, oh, he's a wanker. Mm. I know I don't want to swear in your show. Big time. Oh, he's yeah. big time. Do you know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's not your character. Mm. I mean, when it came to the end time of your, well, actually, before we go to the end time, talk to, to us about England a little bit more. Like, you know, like two goals, bro. Like, yeah, it, it, listen, it, it happened to me in the blink of an eye, bro. Honestly, when it when it got announced, I was going to England. I saw it on Sky Sports. I didn't mm -hmm. get a phone call, bro. Mm -hmm. I, saw, I was looking at my TV in my house. I saw it on Sky Sports. My name getting slipped for England. That happened a lot, doesn't it? Mm. And, and I couldn't believe it. I looked on the camera on, on the TV. They didn't call you up? No, right? no. They, they used to get a, a fax. You used to get yeah, a fax yeah. or an email. I remember looking at the TV in my mum's house. I was like, oh well. And then uh, and after that, I got a phone call saying, you're going to meet over England. You're going to go on tour with them. And obviously, the manager was Sven Goran Eriksson. It just happened so quick, bro. I, I wasn't even t intended to start that game. Yeah. Um, Stuart Downing was going to start. Mm. I think he got injured the day before, and we was practicing all three kicks the day before. Three kicks all the time. I was hitting them row Z. They were over the gap. I couldn't. I couldn't find the top bins. And then obviously in the game when I, I scored a free kick, it was like wow, it was an unbelievable experience, man. Trip to the United States. I, yeah, I, I used to love. I used to love going on tour in it, Man United to America. Unreal. We used to go shopping all the time. The best Any tour, downtime. The best tours ever. Yeah, I saw. Oh, I don't want to give away too much. Yeah, don't, 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 don't. No, you don't You've got something go coming for that soon. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah okay, yeah, cool. Sick.
I used to love going to America. Oh. Are the best Still. times ever. Me, you, and Quinny used to go like shop. Won't we got time off in the diary? What, can you let us know? Oh, uh, yeah, you got an afternoon off training. Mm. Right, meet you down straight after lunch. Boom, everyone else yeah. is going to sleep. We were going out shopping. <laughs> you know what I've seen. That's all I'm saying, innit? Is that what I put in the group the other day? Do you remember? Yeah. Do, you remember yeah. do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember when um, we, was, we, was, we were somewhere in a little room together? Me, you, Roy Carroll, Scolzi, <laughs> Scolzi, and um, Roy, Roy, Roy Carroll fell asleep, bro. Yeah, yeah. Brother, next day, come on. <laughs> Wait, I'm not going to say who did what, but I remember he was in, that in, bre- that was in, was in breakfast. <laughs> he, walk, he walked down, he had one eyebrow missing. He had one eyebrow missing. <laughs> he, he had his sunglasses on. He was like, it's a long season, lad. It's a long season. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to find out who did it. And I was like, well, me, right? Was... No, you know what happened? He was <laughs> chatting some rubbish, wasn't he? Remember, he had a few drinks and he was yeah. chatting. He said that a was few it. things. <laughs> he, he said a few things, yeah? yeah. And within about a minute, no lie, he just crumbled on the sofa and fell asleep. Yeah. So I, and I it, and it's funny. It's funny how, like, it wasn't me or you. It was someone else, mate. Yeah. Who did it? Yeah, you have named three people. people. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna add it up and go. Oh, he's got I got, got took off. A nightmare. Unbelievable. In those circumstances, mm. watching you... his face in the basin and looked at him. Like, mad. Anyway, can you talk to us uh, about your move to Sunderland? How did that come about? And your time at Sunderland? What was that like? Yeah, so I had that come back in. When I left, I think it was 2007 I left yeah. Man United. 06, 07. Um, in the summer, before before that, I was at under 21's European Championships. Mm-hmm. And um, I had I had, a, I had, a, I had a fracture in my spine. I wasn't even playing. I wasn't playing for the 21's. So it was like, I get where Man United, if he was a Man United, like Silas Ferguson, thinking, wow, he's like, plays for the biggest club in the world. He can't even get on the 21's team, basically. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying that swayed their, their, their mind, because I, it, is, it is what it is. But I remember um, Silas Ferguson calling and saying, you know, we've had a bid on the phone with Sunderland, basically, and um, it, you know, your time's up, basically. Even though I, I, I love him, bro. Honestly, mm-hmm. he's unbelievable, unbelievable guy, unbelievable manager, and he knows when the right timing is. And I feel like it was my right timing to go onto the next chapter of my career. Mm-hmm. And obviously, Roy was manager of Sunderland, and I had, I had a great relationship with Roy. He's been, you know, throughout my whole career, Sunderland, even Aston Villa. I went to Aston Villa because of Roy. A lot of people don't even know that. He was assisted at um, Aston Villa at the time. So I went to um, Sunderland. I could have gone to Everton as well. You know, a lot of, lot of players who play for Man United end up going to Everton because they're in the same area where you, we, we live there. All our houses are in the same area. And it's not Liverpool. And it's not Liverpool. You know, <laughs> you know you've got Tim Howard, Phil Neville, who've made the go over. And I decided, I decided not to go um, to Everton only because of my connection with Roy. And they, they, they just, came, just came up into the Premier League as well. That's a big choice because David Moyes was manager at the time. Yeah, he was. He, a good he, job he, as well. And he, yeah, he's doing a great job. And you know, Everton is a big club. Mm-hmm. But I just had my connection with Roy. As I said, I've always had the respect for Roy as a as a captain, as a person. And I, I, I always I always like what he's about. Uh, I feel like he gets me as well. And he, he would just tell me how it is straight. He, he would just tell you how it is straight away. No, no, no bullshit. And I like that. As a player, I needed that as a player. Yeah. He did a lot for you as well. You were setting off air that... Um, you got he basically he made you the main man as soon as you came in. Yeah. So, but obviously, when you're going from Man United to Sunderland, you, you're kind of confident already. Like you said, whenever, whenever a player will back then, whenever you left Man United, it's a downward step. Unless you're going Real Madrid, it's, it's always a downward step. It is what it is. Um, so I, I I went there confident, thinking, okay, even though Sunderland is a great club, I, I was confident, thinking, yeah, I'm a main man. It is what it is. Let's just show what I can do. And I, and for the first the first season, I, I, as I said, I fractured my spine. I was out all this, the whole season, six, six months of it. Um, so I went. I started very slow at, my, at Sunderland, but I made sure in that summer that I was going to come back ready just to be, be the best I could be. I, I, didn't, I didn't go on holiday, nothing like that. I stayed in all summer working on fitness, getting back to, I remember that that was probably my, one of my best seasons that season. And you came back? I came back strong. I was fitter than anyone on the pitch. I was so fit. Fitness was a massive thing for me. And I came back, I was on fire. You know, and that's when I, I built my relationship with Sunderland fans. What's the biggest thing when you go from United to Sunderland? Is the tempo in training different? Standards? Qu- quality, standards. It's not, it's not there. It, it's just being honest. It is what it is. Even though we, they, they still want to win. It's, it's still, it's still high tempo. Because how, how noticeable are you talking? Very noticeable. Really? Yeah. You know, you... Still another Premier League team. Yeah, it's still... Remember, they, they just came up though. Into, into <clears throat> it, it was championship. They just came up. But it, it, it was very noticeable. But it, it, it would be. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Still, I, my best time at Sunderland was my, my best time in my career was there. I loved it. It was my best. The changing room, 
the vibes, everything about that club, the fans. That that is definitely my best time as a footballer at Sunderland. What's your most memorable game at Sunderland? Um, obviously the you know Sunderland fans for me scoring in the Newcastle derby made me like a cult hero out there, which it, it is what it is. You know, you're, you score against Man City, you be, it's, a, it's a big thing, right? Um, but up there, that rivalry is different. It's worse than Man United Liverpool. Biggest rivalry, you reckon? Yeah? Biggest rivalry. I think after Celtic Rangers, I'd say Newcastle Sunderland. Mm. Wow, that's huge. You know, I, I, I've seen I've seen Man United Liverpool. It's a massive that's massive rivalry. But for me, that's all they have, mate. They live and breathe football up there. It's crazy, and you know, if you lose to Newcastle, mm -hmm. it's it's crazy. You, you can't you can't even get your house for like months. <laughs> Don't even go out, bro. They're just on you. They're on your neck. But if you win, like or like had a few wins, like it's great. It's unbelievable. Didn't you mention that after one of those games, you went out in local boozer? Yeah. After that game, I went out to local boozer in Sunderland and it was just kamikaze, mate. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> Honestly, it was so good. Everyone's buying pints and that. Everyone's singing songs. Wicked. I love that. I actually wish more players would do that. I think yeah. there's such a disconnect between players now. Mm. And I bet the fans love that. And I oh, bet they loved it. The connection between mm. you is just how you become a cult. Yeah, that's how you become a cult. And after that, my, my name would get sung at every game, Kieran. Got to win, wow. win, and then go on. Yeah. That's what, to be fair, United. Remember the, after winning the, the league or anything, mm, yeah. we'd go, we'd go on a pub crawl to yeah. all like the grapes and yeah. places like that, like oh, really? old old pubs. Mm. But like go in there, lock it down. But because mm. all we all felt more comfortable in them places, yeah, mm. more like local where like working men were in. But mm. it's like nowadays it's very difficult to do that for the mm. players. It seems I know because all, all the cameras are social out, social media are different. Out. Yeah, like it's crazy. It's, it's hard. hard. It's hard, hard for them. Now. You also played for Villa, Fulham. What were your times like there? Because looking from the outside, mm -hmm. I felt like you didn't enjoy your football as much. Um, I told you last time when I spoke to you that after you lost against Arsenal one time in the Emirates, I can't remember what game it was. Was it for Villa or? Uh, for Villa. Yeah. I saw you walking, walking. Yeah. 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 And it was just crazy. You well, you I was walking out of Emirates. Bro, you walked up a long road and a couple of the Arsenal fans were like, is that? Is that Kevin Richardson? <laughs> this guy had obviously no one likes to lose in it, mm. but it was almost like there I say it, a depressed kind of like feeling, man. You didn't look like you was enjoying anything, and you weren't aware of what was going on around you. Um, can you describe your time at Villa? Well, Villa, Fulham. You know what, Fulham, Fulham. I like Fulham. The reason yeah. why I went to Fulham is because when I was in Sunderland, I, I, I was my wife was having a, my, our first child. Yeah, and I went. I, I didn't really want to leave Sunderland only because I had a baby. I went to make sure that you know my my new child would be around the grandmother, grandparents, and things Got like it. that. So Got I moved it. back to London. Mm -hmm. But I, I, other than that, if I if I didn't have my first child, I wouldn't have moved back to Fulham. Mm -hmm. I would stay at Sunderland because I love Sunderland. That that, that that was my club. Mm -hmm. But I made a decision. My wife was a London is a London girl, so we made a decision. You know what? We're gonna go back, be around the grandparents, and things like that. Which which I loved. Fulham was a great club. You know you know Fulham. It's like there's no pressure at Fulham. There ain't, there ain't no pressure there. Craven Cottage. Craven yeah. Cottage, you know, even it's a, it's a great club. I loved it, but it's yeah. like, you know, just survival. There's no pressure. It's, it's not an easy, not an easy route. I don't want to say it's an easy route. It's a great club. I, I enjoyed my time at Fulham. Who was Gaffer there then? Martin Yol. I, I, I brought Martin Yol was wicked. Mm. Uh, yeah, he rang me, he said, come, come, come to Fulham. I was like, oh yeah, okay. But I, I, I really liked him. Obviously he left. Um, I had Ren Rene was manager at Fulham one stage. He was great. I love Rene. And we had um, Magat. Oh yeah, picture. We had German guy. Madman. Right. Yeah, Felix. Oh yeah, Felix. Yeah. I've never. I've ne that's the first time I encountered someone really crazy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not crazy. Like, I never, I never encountered someone like that. That for you know what I'm saying. It was like weird because he was so like regiment. You know, these Germans are just cr crazy. Is he even German? German he, or he, Austrian? Oh, like he that. was manager of uh, Bayern Munich, wasn't he? Hmm. But he was so like he did, he didn't. He's, he's number two. Didn't believe in injuries. Mm -mm. What? Bro, if you was injured, like your leg falling off the bone, knee, whatever, go and train. Say, say, mm -hmm. say, get on. Honestly, it was crazy, bro. I never encountered someone like that. I remember as well pre-season, we was running around Richmond Park. Richmond Park, massive. Running around and one guy, I think it was one of the youngsters, like dropped down, like just dropped down, like from, from caked, basically. So tired because it was so long. Man just said, leave him. <laughs> Got on the bus, left him, left the geezer, just wow. left him. He, he was ruthless, that guy. But at Villa, I went to Villa when I was 28, 29. My first two seasons at Villa, I, I liked it. It was great. But after, after that, I just I was losing interest in, in the game. You know, it wasn't... It's oh, hard. You called it a day? It was like 33. 33. 
Yeah, but still young, but baby. And you, and you didn't announce Never. the retirement. No. Can you explain to us the transition from retirement to what you're doing now? Yeah, because obviously I've always had things off the field as well as football. Even though I love football is my main mm -hmm. thing, but I've always been a watch guy. I've always been into watches as a kid. And I started my company up in 2017. And throughout my career, I'd always buy watches and players would say to me, where did you get that from? I'd say, I got it from there, just helping people like get build watches up. And I saw like a market there where people want watches all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a massive, you know, we, 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 we all love watches, everyone does. Even though it doesn't matter what it is, it could be a Casio, it could be anything. We all like wearing a watch, you know? So I, I started my company up in 2017 Broadwalk and then Group. Broadwalk Group. And it went on from there. So I never really thought like I had to, to say, uh, I've retired. I'm not that type of guy. I'm and very, I'm very like, I'm kind of shy. If I'm honest, I'm kind of a shy guy. I don't want to get, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't, 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 don't want to see my name on Sky Sports saying Kieran okay. retired. I'm not, I'm not bothered. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not bothered. But you, you started collecting the watches back in the day and you said that you even consulted with Rio before mm -hmm. you, you started, right? Yeah. I remember ringing Rio and saying, oh, Rio, I'm looking to buy this watch. What do you think? Because at the time I used to look up to Rio, Rio to have watches and things like that. And something I liked as a, as a young kid. And I, I remember us ringing him and saying- Your dad got you watches as well. Yeah, my dad got me a watch when I was 16 for my, birth, for my birthday. And it went on from there. I remember ringing Rio and saying, oh, I wanna get involved in watches. I was at Sunderland at the time when I called him and he was at Man United. He was like, yeah, it's an expensive hobby, bro. It's gonna, it's gonna <laughs> break your bank basically. And he's, he's right, he does break your bank. But if you buy the right watches, you know, your watches double, treble in price. As for me, I've, mm -hmm. I've always been a watch collector, even throughout my career. I've always bought watches. It's always mm. been my thing. When I was 16 years old, I got, I got my first ever watch my father gave me. And from there, my passion just grew into watches. What watch did he get you? Like a Casio? No, that's, that's what I was saying to, to someone the other day. He bought me a Cartier. What? Yeah, he bought me a Cartier tank for my 16th birthday, a Cartier tank. The prof, my dad was getting it in, bro. He's a computer programmer. He's doing his thing. Oh, is he? Your dad was <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad got me a Casio. Fam. No, so my, that, that was my first ever watch. And you know that's a lot of money two thousand pound watch or three thousand pound i couldn't believe it yeah and that my old is you 16 it was my 16th birthday and i was like wow he was a smart man it wasn't it you knew he was getting a return kieran you was at you united know, you know what though God. I, I wish i still had the watch i lost it no way i think someone stole it from my house or something like that and here we are you're gonna tell us who you're you gotta got get in this watch the show it'll, yeah. tell, it'll tell you how it works yeah watch the show i, I tell you yeah. how it works yeah but what yeah. you guys have got to my clients yeah who's your clients mate I have all different clients, yeah. bro. Everyone always assumes that, think that footballers are my main clients. They're not. I'll probably say. Give me, give me a surprising name that you can say, obviously. What, a celebrity, you mean? I don't know, just someone that you go, what, really? Mm. Or even just like a random type of client. Yeah. Like, uh, most of my guys are business guys, honestly. They're most, they're, they're business guys. So, so don't think that if you're watching the show, ballers and watches, oh, I can't relate to that. No, no. there's different I, I, re I, re I reckon probably 20% of my clientele are footballers. Wow. Mm. wow. You, you wouldn't think that. Ballers are hard to deal with, bro. Mm. They are, they're hard work. You'd be surprised. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? They're, they're hard work. Don't give it away, man. Oh, sorry. There's more on the show. All right, cool, cool, cool. cool. Guy, listen, Kieran, thank you very much for coming in today, man. Thank really you. enjoyed it. You need to come back on. And now you're a friend of the channel. You're on the channel. Yeah. You've got your own show. So please, guys, make sure you check it out, Ballers and Watches. And also make sure you check out Broad Talks, which is Kieran's channel. Press the subscribe button. You've got great interviews with Ian Wright, Josh yeah, King. Yeah. I'm going Seen on a couple. There. Real's coming on there. there. Yeah. Real's gonna come on yeah, there. Man, yeah, man. Yeah, you know what? As well, we're not just interviewing footballers. We've got other people. We've got property guys on there, and that's, that's the whole thing about the show. I don't want to just educational. Be a, yeah, it's, it's not yeah. just about footballers. My clients are not just, as I said, they're not footballers. Yeah. So I've got all different types of people on there: businessmen. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got Dean Forbes coming on there. He's a good wow. friend of both of us, mm -hmm. and these, these these are guys are doing things, doing proper moves. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. It's good to see people can relate, not just to a footballer. Like it's like it can be a businessman, it could be anyone, entrepreneur. Mm. That's why I, what I try to promote. Dare I say it, Five is the best YouTube channel. <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry, 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 Steve. Let's go. Greenwich finest, made a name for himself up north. Started off with a hammer, switched to United. Time to kick down doors. Debut at Olympia, cost only 18. Started a dream. Next month, first goal for the club, same year, won a cup with a youth team. England debut, he scored two. Sunderland's where he brought through. Full back or wing, ain't a thing. Pattern in the midfield, too. Had a nice spell when the Premier he can say that he won that. I'm on about Kieran Richardson, then a clock, then go back and run that. 
<laughs> that's it. We'll be back next week on Vibe with Five. Please make sure you hit us the, hit us up in the comments, share, like, everything you got to do to keep us going. And we'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>